So to a few of you, this video is going to be a little bit silly, but imagine if you had been producing videos for 10 or 12 years and uh, your videos were based on projects that you build or perhaps uh, just breadboards that you make to support the video in order to uh, prove out some principle that you're trying to teach. You would be collecting a lot of uh, projects that maybe never see the light of day again. It could be some type of a radio receiver or an amplifier or an oscillator or some, some uh, device that, uh, that maybe you've even forgotten about after seven, eight years. Well, I've run into a problem here where I can't fit any more of these finished projects in Mr. Whoopi's closet, which is where I call my repository for all of this uh, kind of material. As you guys know, I have this closet that I call Mr. Whoopi's closet with all of the projects I've built for supporting all of the videos I've made over the years. But uh, it gets worse than this. These are items that I've removed from Mr. Whoopi's closet. And this isn't even the half of it. And it came time to clean it out and recycle some of those parts. You know, a lot of the parts that I use in these projects are fairly rare today. And uh, going out and buying more and more or acquiring more and more parts at Hamfest doesn't make a lot of sense when you've got them sitting on a piece of wood somewhere right in the closet where you just need to unsolder something, unscrew the part, and there it is, ready to go for a new project. So let's call this a recycling exercise. I've got a whole pile of, of circuits and breadboards and projects here that I have deemed I'm not going to use again. Some of these I won't even be able to identify what they are or what they were for or what video they're attached to, believe it or not. And here's one. This is something I made at some point. It's, it looks like it's a bolt with some wire wrapped around it and a piece of metal and a spring attached to the metal. This is a buzzer. It's a homemade buzzer. Now, why did I make a homemade buzzer? Well, maybe just to prove principle that I could build a buzzer, but that's a good example. We'll get that thing out of the way. Um, here's a solid state project of some kind. I think this might have had a variable capacitor with it that's been removed. This looks like it's some type of radio frequency preamp, maybe a preamp for a crystal radio, something like that. And it's got a primary that you would attach the antenna to and the tune secondary. And it looks like it has a Faraday shield between the two coils. So I see three transistors. This guy's going to get recycled. What do we got here? Okay, this guy's tunable. Um, small capacitor. This looks like it's VHF. My guess on this one is a super regenerative receiver for VHF. Maybe for the aircraft band, maybe lower frequency, because I see a coil here with turns on it. This might be like a 28 megahertz or a CB even, AM super regenerative receiver of some kind. Okay. That guy can get recycled. Lots of good parts on here. Let's keep digging. Oh, here's one. Uh, this was just a temporary amplifier I built for one of those 1920s tubes. Uh, maybe it was a Type 45 tube. Looks like it's an audio output amplifier to drive a speaker. And oh, it's got a beautiful Black Beauty cap on here. That's a nice capacitor. I'll definitely recover parts off this. Okay, what is this? What have we got here? This is sharp. Okay, if I had to guess on this one, 
I think what we're looking at is an AM broadcast transmitter. Two tubes. This is probably where you put the modulation in. So this is an AM band transmitter, a two tube job. And it's got a couple of transformers back to back that probably represent the power supply. Lots of good parts inside to recover. Great candidate for recycling. Ooh, this is cool. Okay, anybody guess what this is? That's an antenna tuner. And it's an antenna tuner for a crystal radio. Basically, you change the tuning on the antenna by pushing this ferrite rod in and out. So that's a clever way of uh, tuning your crystal radio's antenna without having to resort to taps and a switch or a slider. You can do it with this ferrite rod going in and out. Okay, no whining, stay strong. Okay, what have I got here? If I had to guess, I think we're looking at a SWR bridge or a power meter sensor. Looks like I have a toroid with some, some turns on it, a couple of 1N34 diodes and outputs that would go to a meter. Yeah, this is some kind of a bridge for measuring power or SWR or both. Okay. Ooh, this is cute. Here's another single tube receiver and it looks like it's also low frequency. This is probably another super regen of some kind. A super regenerative one tube receiver, probably for 15 meters, 10 meters, or the 11 meter CB band, who knows? Lots of good parts there. Okay, wow, this is fancy. This is a regenerative receiver of some kind. Uh, two tubes, uh, looks like a 12AT7 driving a 6AQ5. And it has a antenna coupling control that's a variometer actually a very coupler, a vario coupler. And uh, AM broadcast band. This would be the tickler coil down here. Here's the main tuning. A nice 365 picofarad capacitor. Audio output. This is a, basically this is a speaker level type regen for the AM broadcast band. Nice piece. That will, come all apart. Beautiful parts from that. Okay, what else we got here? Oh, what is this? What is this? Okay, obviously there was a variable capacitor here that's gone. There's an output coil, a big choke, a crystal. Uh, 3855 kilohertz. I know what this is. This is a single tube AM transmitter, probably five watts out, suppressor grid modulated. I remember this. We used to have this net on called the Piss Weaker net or the PW net long time ago, more than 10 years ago. And people would get on the air with their one tube carbon microphone and other types of modulation flea power rigs on 75 meter AM. And we'd all get on with these one tube transmitters on Saturday afternoon when the band was in short skip mode. And we'd have a lot of fun with the, with these one tube transmitters. This one was an 837 suppressor grid modulated AM rig. There you go. That's a beauty. Okay. What is this? Oh, Okay, what are we looking at here? I believe this is an AM broadcast transmitter. Again, a self-contained AM broadcast transmitter. Multiple tubes. A lot of work went into this thing. Looks like a foot came off. I can imagine working weeks on a project like this, but again, never will use it again. 
It has a one megahertz rock. So this was uh, the middle of your dial, your AM dial transmitter. It's just parts, folks. Ooh, here's another breadboard with a nice variable capacitor on it. And it looks like a battery tube, a 1U4. So this is a uh, an RF preamp. Looks like its input coil's been taken off, already been scavenged. So this preamp, this radio frequency preamplifier will be used for parts. Oh, wow, look at this. This is a speaker amplifier. Looks like it has a 35W4 rectifier, a 50C5 output tube, and a 12AV6. This is an off-the-line transformerless audio amplifier. Wow, this thing would be a widow maker, huh? A little bit of a danger in this. And we will recycle all of these parts. There it is, a speaker amplifier off the line. Hey, it's Thanksgiving. Be kind. Okay, so this is a 1929 transmitter. Looks like it uses an O1A tube. And I haven't used this for some years. It's all dusty. I believe this is a four-coil Meisner transmitter. It has a grid coil. It has a plate coil. It has a tuning coil. And it has an output coil. It's a four-coil Meisner transmitter. And this is just the main tuning. 80 meters, it looks like. Now, the interesting thing about this transmitter is the power supply. And I remember doing this power supply. It's two flat pack transformers. And to get the 2.5 volts to light up the tube, I took one of the secondaries of the 12 volt split secondary type system. And I just kept taking turns off till I got down to 2.5 volts. So that's what that's about. And uh, the other the other transformer stepped up for high voltage. So this is a safe system. It looks safe, doesn't it? But uh, again, I'm not using this transmitter. You know, it's just sitting there doing nothing. So that guy's got to go. Okay, let's see if I can get this off here. Oh, that's heavy. 1929 transmitter. Okay, what do we got here? This is cute. Um, I see a dual tube. My guess is this is some kind of a preamp as well for shortwave. Um, probably a cascode amplifier for shortwave to put on the front of your shortwave receiver to pep it up. Nice capacitor to recover here. Okay. Okay, this is looks like a broadcast band receiver and it's got a battery tube. I think this is just a straight I think this is just a straight grid leak detector. Well, it's got a pot. I don't know. Maybe it's a preamp. Not sure on this one. This could be a regenerative preamp. How's that sound? Okay, and finally, oop, I don't know what that's about. Finally, we have a pretty nice looking regen here. And I remember this was a regen that probably was a Morgan to start with. And I ended up converting it into a receiver using the new tube. This is the new tube uh, low voltage thermionic emitter, emitter device, dual, and it was made into a twinplex regenerative receiver. Again, this thing will never see the light of day again, and it has a nice uh, coil, but notice the tickler coil is magnificently large compared to a regular tube. 
to get the new tube to actually oscillate, I had to oversize the tickler coil and really maximize the feedback. This is an oddball. This guy needs to be recycled. Perhaps I'll keep the, uh, the basic components so it can be made back into a regular regen, but I'll be stripping out a lot of these parts. So, don't hate me for recycling some of this equipment. Remember, I've got probably double this amount. So that means that half of it I am saving. I'm not destroying everything. I'm only recycling the things that I'm truly not using. So this is a kind of a Thanksgiving video for you guys. And we're very thankful for having parts and thankful for the amount of time that we've been able to put into these projects.